Whatever you do, don't eat the delicious cards. If you didn't know, this is an official ruling that's found on almost every card that creates a food token in Magic the Gathering. It might sound unbelievable, but it's actually a callback to the card Fat Ass, which was originally printed in the 2004 silver boarded set Unhinged. It's sound advice, but it also hints at a really important question. What happens if you eat a magic card? My name is Arcosa, and I make videos about magic trivia and design. If you could quickly hit that like button and subscribe to my channel, it would help me out a lot. I appreciate it. I have a degree in biochemistry, so it's sometimes difficult for me to see things outside of their chemical makeup. For example, a trading card is composed of paper, which in turn is almost entirely made up of cellulose. Ignoring the fact that cardstock is a special type of paperboard that also contains stuff like blue ink and protective varnish, structurally cellulose is just sugar, so it's easy to get an approximation of the caloric content of cards. Given a weight of around 1.75 grams, and a heat of combustion of 4.172 kilocalories per gram, we can estimate that each magic card is around 7.3 dietary calories of raw energy. The more interesting question is, how many of these calories can we actually use? I don't have to tell you that humans don't eat paper. After all, cellulose is made up of long, densely packed fibers that are incredibly hard for most animals to digest. Those that do digest fibers do so with the help of specialized bacteria found in the gut, using the process of fermentation. And unlike ruminants, such as cows, deers, and 3-3 elks, Humans are understood to lack the machinery needed to extract these calories, and thus most sources will tell you that paper is of zero nutritional value. However, from a strictly theoretical standpoint, this doesn't seem quite true, and here's why. In 2016, the FDA declared that cellulose is not digested by human enzymes, nor fermented by the colonic microflora. Yet in humans, we've known for some time about several types of cellulose-digesting bacteria called Ruminococcus, a genus also found in the guts of cows, deers, and elks. With some being discovered in the 70s, numerous isolated in 2003, and one as recently as 2012. And as recently as 2024, Science Magazine picked up an article comparing the prevalence of Ruminococcus in different human populations across land and time. These species are known to reside in the large intestine and are regarded as healthy parts of the human microbiome. But most importantly, they're evidence that humans are associated with machinery that digests cellulose. We've seen this before in studies that cover the breakdown of cellulose into energetic molecules called short-chain fatty acids using human fecal samples, as well as studies that suggest that 5-10% to of the calories we use come from indigestible fibers. Although the process is inefficient, it's not zero. Understanding that cardstock is paper, and paper is mostly cellulose, there's calories to be had. Now, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. Humans should not be eating paper. Firstly, it's dangerous to our health. This goes without saying. But also consider that paper is a form of cellulose that's different from both research-grade and food cellulose. It's much harder, if not impossible, to digest. And even if it weren't, we simply aren't built for it. Even though we have these gut bacteria, they reside in our large intestine, which is at the end of our digestive tract. Fermentation is a process that can take days, and by the time the bacteria get their hands on an appropriate substrate, it's likely too late. But if there's a possibility of obtaining a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a calorie by eating a magic card, that means that there's a mathematical answer to this question, whether it means we have to eat hundreds or thousands or hundreds of thousands of cards. Well, I did a bit more digging than I'm proud to admit, and the verdict is... inconclusive. To understand why, let me give you a tour of the horrible labyrinth I had to navigate for this project. For starters, almost every source on the matter is half a century old. Many of the stories are incomplete, and a lot has changed in our research standards since then. But to indulge ourselves, let's take a look at one example from the 80s. 
This study had a cohort of volunteers eat samples of radioactive plant cellulose. Over a few days, they monitored the patients and collected samples of their breath and feces, measuring the amount of radioactive material in both. The idea is that if cellulose is chemically inert in the digestive system, all the radioactivity should be excreted intact. What they found was that the poo only accounted for 57% of the radioactivity they put in, while 16% of it was exhaled as carbon dioxide waste, suggesting that some of the cellulose was used in energy production. This was a promising lead because if we assume that 16% of cellulose fibers are usable as energy, we can translate this directly to our research question. 16% of the total calories in a magic card is around one calorie, but of course it can't be that easy. This study from 1989 showed values as low as 7%. This one from 1970 suggested up to 55%, depending on age. And reports of this one from 1968, with a cohort size of 1, claim that none was used up at all. Although the methodologies are similar, the results are wildly inconsistent. The authors note many confounding factors, but we've never bothered to get the full picture. They suggest that different types of cellulose are easier to process than others, but this much was already obvious. And perhaps it's this obviousness that makes it not so interesting to study. In the practical sense, all these signs indicate that cellulose is a negligible part of our caloric intake, and knowing what we know now, an estimate of even one calorie seems incredibly optimistic too. On one hand, the idea that humans can digest cellulose at all is antithetical to modern knowledge. If you ask any nutritionist or reasonable person, they'll tell you as much. We don't eat paper. On the other hand, this is a theoretical question, not a practical one, and impractical questions seldom get solved. Nearing the brink of defeat, I read quite a curious story in this article from 1984. This study is a crude investigation where they fed a wood-derived cellulose to three participants. Two of the three couldn't digest any of it, but the third apparently had a fermentation efficiency of 60%. Even stranger, he appeared to completely lose this ability over the course of the study and never recovered it even years after. While I don't think we can draw any conclusions from this study, it did get me thinking about something I've known all along. This entire time, I've been trying to calculate the calories in a magic card under the assumption that we can model the human gut as a closed system, and assign a value as a general case, when in reality, our relationship with gut bacteria isn't static. It varies between person to person and can change over time. The statement that humans can't digest cellulose is true because it doesn't say anything about external factors. This 2010 study showed that there's a correlation with how well your gut bacteria digest cellulose and the type of fart you make. Humans make two different types of fart. And this 2024 study I mentioned earlier made headlines because it suggests that humans in industrial societies have lost a great deal of our cellulose degrading bacteria, especially when compared to modern hunter-gatherers and humans of the past. After all, even though Ruminococcus is widespread and proven to be biochemically active, Cellulose degradation and fermentation in the human gut is rare or absent in most humans today. Knowing that nutrition data and medical information are used as models, and cellulose fermentation is not the norm, it's okay to assign a value of zero calories. But if we really want to address our original question, we have to stop searching for a model and make our own. And to do so, we return to biochemistry. Without further ado... If we make the following assumptions, and they're not all true, we can use data from this year 2000 study of cellulose metabolism to find the in vitro production rates of the three main products of synthetic cellulose fermentation using human fecal suspension. This gives us the ratio of short chain fatty acids liberated from the original sample over 12 hours, which we can then extrapolate to the mass of a magic card. Use these conversion factors to determine the calories produced, normalize against the number of cells used in the study, add these all up, account for a 95% efficiency, and we get that a magic card, when fully digested, yields approximately 0.16 calories. And when answering how many calories are in a magic card, we have four answers. 
our thermodynamic maximum of 7.3, our respiratory data somewhere in the ballpark of 1, our in vitro biochemical value of 0.16, and our practical value of practically none. How interesting. Do not ask me about foils, and don't eat the delicious cards. I spent way too long on this. This video is part one of a longer discussion about food in Magic the Gathering. If you're curious, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more fun stuff. I need your help so I can make more videos like this. A link to my Patreon is down below. Thanks and see you next time.